Insurance after all. You will recall that the lockdown order within the states started on the 1st of April 2020. Two days before then, we had actually stopped entries into the state except for goods that are considered very essential. On the 7th of April, we had an incident case of COVID-19 in Delta State. That was the seventh day of the lockdown. Three cases have thus far been identified in Delta State. Unfortunately, we lost one of the cases and that case did present very late at our Lara center and the patient had other ailments and that led to the death of the patient. In fact, the test results came out positive after the patient had passed away. I want to assure you that we have continued to do contract contact tracing, 70 contacts have been identified, 46 of them have actually been reached, and we are still doing our best to get the remaining 24. Some persons have been isolated in their home, or what we refer to as self-isolation, that is when the officials involved have been able to get the satisfaction that such persons can truly be isolated in their homes. For some other persons that could not be isolated in their homes, they are currently being isolated in three different centers. We have two cases that are active. One is in managed at the Ogara Center, that is the Delta State University, we've created a center in that place. And one also is being managed at our infectious disease center at the Sabah. Both persons are doing very well. We have four treatment centers on the whole. The Infectious Disease Center built by the Delta State Government at the Federal Medical Center at Sabah. The Asaba Specialist Hospital, which currently is our biggest center. The Delta State University Teaching Hospital, Ogara, is the third. And the center at the Wari Central Hospital we come on stream fully today. All these centers also have isolation facilities. And we have tended to create isolation centers in such a manner that people will not cross infect others. And that is why we are using the single room option for the isolation of suspected cases until the test positive. We have 12 holding centers across the state and medical staff have been trained in all these holding centers. I want to advise our people that COVID-19, yes, a viral illness that has con continued to ravage the world but it is not a death sentence. Many of the cases are mild, and many of them will recover. As of today, we are aware that there are only 10 deaths in Nigeria, even when we have 343 cases already confirmed in Nigeria. I therefore want to urge our people to avoid all forms of stigmatization 
and the best cooperation we'll have from the people will help those who may fall ill to truly identify themselves in the best interest of the people. Anyone could be exposed, anyone could be infected. So the high and the low, the rich and the poor. So it is for all of us to continue to obey the rules and praying also that God will intervene in the situation in our state, in our nation, and the world over. I want to reassure you that health personnel have been trained and they are very proactive. I want to use this opportunity to thank all our health staff, which includes both the doctors, the nurses, the laboratory scientists, the pharmacists, and other health staff that have been trained. They are all in good spirit and committed to their duties. And I'm glad and I'm grateful to them. Ambulance drivers and other auxiliary staff, like cleaners, laundry men, and others have also been adequately trained. And we have enough ambulances to be able to convey patients or cases that are suspected through isolation or treatment centers across the state. I want to reassure both our health staff and the auxiliary staff that they will be adequately remunerated in the course of their duty. They are working out the details. I had a teleconference meeting with my team yesterday, and I'm sure that by the end of today, will be able to communicate to the health staff the amounts of money that will be paid on a daily basis for the work that they do. We must appreciate them for the great work, the great commitment, because they are in the line of duty to help each and every one of us and for the good of each and every one of us. The Delta State Government has gone ahead to start the production of face masks, but this time the one made with a cloth. They are trying to produce a few hundreds of thousands of the face masks, and this face mask will be distributed free of charge to all deltas. The good thing about the face mask that is made with the cloth that is that just as you wash your hands with soap and water, you can also wash the face mask on a daily basis with soap and water if you want to use it and you're going out. And that will definitely reduce the risk of infection. This I hope that the distribution of the face mask will start by the end of this week and will continue to distribute the face mask as much as we are able to produce. We have also put in place a food bank. We are getting the last stocks of the initial order. And by the special grace of God, in the next 42 to 72 hours, food will be sent across to support are indigent people who do not have access to food in all wards of the state. We we'll use the wards, the federal wards, as a means of distribution concerning this. And it is to all their towns and not restricted to party politics. I also want to use this opportunity to thank all those who have made donations to our various accounts and those who have made donations in kind to the food bank. And I want to encourage all Deltans to continue to assist the poor 
through this means. We will remain accountable and we will ensure that the money or the food items donated are put into proper use. We have accounts as of today in Zenith Bank, in Stalin Bank, and also the UBA. You can pay monies into any of those accounts, and I'm sure that the SMEs through which those bank accounts are being communicated to all. And for those who want to find, get further information, you can make inquiries from the office of the SSG or the Commissioner for Health. Having taken cognizance of the health scale in the number of cases nationally, standing at 343 today, spread across 19 states and the Federal Capital Territory, and the need to ease the, the process of contact tracing, the stay-at-home order has become more necessary. For the safety of our people, and to enable us to track, identify, isolate, and test all contacts. By the powers vested on me in line with the Quarantine Act and the subsequent Infectious Disease Revelation 2020, I hereby extend the stay-at-home order for another period of two weeks. We do know that this will cause some pain to our people it is for public good and for the interest of our health and I want to urge all their times to plead observe the stay at home order. We believe that in these next two weeks we'll be able to track all contacts, identify all possible cases and be able to take the needed action and that we'll be able to use this opportunity to also produce enough quantity of face masks for our people. It's our hope that we'll be able to return to duty and nobody will be expected to be seen outside. The dust to dung curfew is thereby, thereby imposed with effect from tomorrow until the next 14 days. Only persons on essential duties are exempted. We have previously given a list of those on essential duties. I also want to plead with our law enforcement officers to please treat all health staff, to please treat all health staff with courtesy, because these are men and women on the line of duty, and therefore they deserve respect, and we need to support them to do the work of helping to save lives. Therefore, if any health staff approaches you with the identity card, please, please do not cause such a health staff any form of pain because it will be rather unfortunate that those whom we are feeling continue their duties in order to save our lives I would inflict on them further pain. I want to also use this opportunity to thank the Commissioner for Police for taking immediate action against some police officers who deliberately inflicted pain on some hair staff. And I want to thank God that we have been able to resolve that issue, which would have caused the doctors in the Federal Medical Center to go on strike. However, I want to appeal to all doctors and all other health staff. This is not the time under any circumstance to consider going on strike or work through. It will be a disservice to humanity and to be against the vote of office that applied for the doctors, against the physician's vote to which each and every one of them. Zero A zero. 3123 The third, 
080-31-230528. And the fourth number, 080-31-230528. I want to urge each and every one of us, even as we stay at home, to continue to practice the washing of our hands with soap and water as regularly as possible, and as much as possible, avoid touching your eyes, your mouth, or your nose with your hands. We have continued to emphasize social distancing which is also physical distancing, ensuring that whenever you're having conversation, even at home with your loved one, try to stay six feet or two meters apart from each other. For those who find themselves in a place where they could not immediately get, where they cannot immediately have water and soap, please use hand sanitizers. If you have touched any surfaces, it's important that you wash your hands and use a sanitizer if you have no soap and water. The use of face masks is advisable if you have an occasion to go out, even into the market. But as of today, all markets have been closed. Then we have asked the markets for foodstuffs an essential item be opened in primary schools and secondary schools across the state, and also at the discretion of the local government council chairman in open spaces within our communities. But if you need to go out and you have a face mask, please use it. But however, as I said, in the next few days, we'll start the distribution of this mask, which is currently being made by Deltans at the cost to the government. This face mask will be uh, distributed free of charge. I want to use this opportunity to appreciate all our local government council chairmen and the local government teams that have been working with them, particularly the executive secretaries of local health authorities and principally, the disease surveillance nursing officers in the various local governments with other members of the team and all those who have assisted our local government council chairman to ensure, and to ensure that it means that we have to try to open the food markets in as many primary schools and secondary schools that are available. And when we do not have enough of this available, please, look out for open spaces and cause temporary markets to be opened in such places. We must also build a team to ensure that the social distancing is observed. Because people have continued to use the opportunity of the opening of food markets to loiter around, we have decided that the food markets, these temporary food markets, we only be open on Mondays, on Mondays, on Wednesdays, and Saturdays only. And I believe that this is doable. I want to urge all our council chairmen to ensure strict observance of these days for the opening of food markets. And those who also sell essential things that are needed in the home, like toiletries and soap, can also be allowed in such food markets in the designated places and in the dates so approved. All public gatherings and private gatherings remain banned during these next two weeks. Movement of people and goods into, out, and within Delta states remain unlawful, excepting for essential goods, which actually are mainly foodstuffs, 
and medical equipment or medical items. The closure of all public places, including event centers, bars and restaurants, canteens, malls and supermarkets, shops and formal marketplaces, cinemas and nightclubs and lounges remain in force. And I want to appeal to all the fans to please cooperate with us. It's not our wish to inflict pain on you, but the circumstances of the now have made it impossible. I want to thank you all for your cooperation and thank the press and all those who have been involved in ensuring our communication with our people. I also want to use this opportunity to thank the state team that has worked tirelessly to put things in place. I'm aware that some Deltans through the social media have done all manner of things, unfortunately, to try to castigate what is being done. But we are not deterred, we stay on course. We are very confident of the fact that we put in everything that needed, and it is our hope that Deltans who have symptoms will speak out early enough, because the earlier we're able to detect COVID-19, the easier it is to manage the patient and ensure that they get well, as many, many others across the world are getting well. I wish you the best and hope that all the times will continue to pray for our state, for our people, and for our nation, Nigeria. Thank you, and God bless.